Today we are going to talk about menstrual synchrony and this is a very interesting topic. You'll have to stick all the way up to the end. Now you find that uh, a group of ladies who are living together, they tend to have a, a cycle starting almost at the same time and ending almost at the same time. These ladies were initially having different cycles, but because they are now staying together, they end up having this synchronized. Or you visit your friend, you are a lady, maybe you're not on your menses, but you find that your friend is having their menses. You end up having menses also to synchronize with theirs. Or you have your menses, they don't have the host. And when you get there, you stay with them for some few days, you end up influencing their cycles also, or maybe getting yours influenced. This is called the menstrual synchrony. We don't have like a proof, like a scientific data which is rigid, but we have theories which are explaining this. Now, the first one revolves around pheromones, and this is called Manklin talk theory. Now, this theory suggests something about the pheromones. Now, can we talk about what pheromones are? These are chemicals which are usually secreted to alter a behavior of a crowd, like in a society, for example. You have a dog which is on heat. It usually releases some pheromones and you end up having like so many dogs coming to try to attend to that dog. Some of which have come from uh, like uh, 10 kilometers. But who told them that that dog is on heat? The pheromones. So they usually release those pheromones and uh, the dogs will catch that and then they'll try to follow the source of the pheromones and they'll end up going to exactly that point where that dog is. So those are pheromones. And also the ants usually do the same thing. Have you ever observed those, uh, the ants, when they form like a path, it's usually very hard for any of the ants to miss the road because they are following a certain pheromone. Pheromones are very important. Now, how do they come in? Take for example, you're the one who is visiting your friend and you're the dominant. So your pheromones are stronger than hers. She's going to synchronize her menses towards you. So you're going to influence them. If you visit that person and they have the strongest pheromones, you will end up adjusting your menses to match there. So that's how this explanation kind of looks like. I'm going to explain about the significance of the pheromones when it comes to the third theory. But now let's go to the second one. And this is the lunar phases. Now you see the cycles for a woman, they usually revolve around the, the moon. That's why the normal cycles go for 28 days. So they're based off of that. Now, Take for example, you want to move from here all the way to, let's say, USA, United States of America. When you go there, you have lost how many hours? You're going to lose eight hours. So we are ahead of them by a whooping eight hours. Now, when you get there, your body will have to synchronize to the moon and several phases of the moon so that it will be able to adjust according to now the time they are at that moment. I don't know whether you understand that now. Take for example, right now, uh, we are at a certain lunar phase. So when you go directly to USA, you're going to deduct those eight hours from that phase so that you get to adjust to that phase exactly. And there's something that we call the circadian rhythm according to your body, to adjust according to the times of the day and uh, the rhythm between 24 hours, the sleep and waking. So there's that cycle. So you'll have to adjust when you get there. And that's why people usually get jet lag when they travel over long distances because they'll try to catch up. Now the third theory revolves around evolution. Now we have several aspects here, but you remember you talked about pheromones. They're going to come into play here. We're going to give several examples. The first one you find that um, you might have, okay, let's go to somewhere in nature and uh, focus on the animals that tend to form colonies. Like for example, if you find the, the lion, we have lions, the mammals, that was what I'm talking about. Now, you find that we have one lion serving several lionesses and it will be an advantage if they give birth almost at the same time so that when it comes to raising their young ones, it becomes easier because now that will be now like a family matter because she has cubs, she also has cubs, she has other cubs. It means that now uh, raising those cubs will be like a family affair because now you're benefiting, she's benefiting, she's also benefiting. Now raising them will become even easier because um, you might find that now because uh, it will be hard for them to just sit down and uh, watch their kids. It will be very hard for them when it comes to the nutrition. So some of the females will be left guarding the kids and then the others will go for hunting. It will be easier that way as compared to when it's only one uh, lioness with the cubs and everyone else is not interested because they are not invested in that. <laughs> so there's nothing, so there's nothing mutual about them. So 
the pheromone will come into play, they try to synchronize their breeding season so that at least they will be, they will be having several females giving birth at the same time so that now raising those kids will be easier. So this is one of the reasons why sometimes that synchrony will take place. Also, we have other animals that will depend on seasons. We have seasons when you have uh, less of the food and other seasons when food is in abundance. Now, they try to synchronize the, uh, uh, the breeding season so that at least by the time that they're giving birth, there will be plenty of food. So they're not going to struggle to raise their young ones. So they're not going to suffer as much and also increase the probability of continuing the species. So this is one of the reasons. Now let's go to the second scenario. And now we are still focusing on the same colony. We have one lion serving several lionesses in the same colony. We also have some other males that are not dominant because you have the dominant, the, the leader of the troop and uh, every other person will have to follow their command. Now we have other neighboring colonists, they have also their males, so for them to be dominant they'll have to fight off this dominant male. But it will be to the advantage of the, of the species to make sure that they are getting the best genetics. And this is where now the competition come in. Now they tend to synchronize their cycles so that now you'll have so many females which are on heat at the same time. So it becomes very hard for this one male to serve all the females because they are all on heat and this gives other males a chance to breed and this increases the chances of introducing a new trait, the genetical trait, into this colony and these species and this will improve the quality of the species and also improve the chances of their survival. So this is a good thing for the whole species and also kind of a disadvantage to the dominant male. Still on the same colony you find that you have only one male which is dominant and we have so many other females that are on heat at the same time. Now this will work to the advantage of the male because now for that male to be the leader, it means that it's physically fit and genetically it's able to defend the colony and defend the title, meaning that it contains the desired traits genetically. Now the females will have to, if they are all on heat at the same time, the females will have to compete so that they get a chance to breed with the dominant male. This now will improve the species because now you see, the one that will be the strongest, the one that will win, the one that has the sharpest mind will be the one that will win. The competition here and it means that now this genetic composition will now be passed down to the others and this is how now it will improve the species. Now those are theories trying to explain this phenomenon and uh, we have so many other. We even have a studies trying to prove this but we don't have a tangible one yet because Kind of we have some studies which are failing, others which are successful, but they don't have this repeatability aspect. And we don't know the actual um, thing that usually influences this, but it's there. And by the, if you have this experience, you can tell us in the comment region so that we get to see whether this is a myth or is something that's working there. Have you ever gone to, a, to your friend and your mens is synchronized? Have you ever had that instance? Tell us in the comment region and uh, also make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. See you in the next video.